Welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Yes, this is the fun and friendly i3 Music Workstation. And today I'm going to give you a tour of its features. I'll give you a quick tutorial to get you started. And also, of course, there'll be lots of demos. So let's get started. <laughs> begin, I need to let you know that Korg sent me this keyboard free of charge so I can try it out and share some videos with you. I'm not getting paid, but I can keep it as long as I want. I'm happy with that, so thank you very much, Korg. A good piano sound is really important. Let's start by initializing the keyboard and taking a listen. At any time, you can press this grand piano sound, which will take you back to the main grand piano spread across the entire keyboard, and it sounds like this. That's a pretty good piano sound in my opinion. Lots of nice dynamics. Very punchy and lots of detail in the high and low registers. You saw how I was using the octave buttons here to get more uh, range of notes towards the top and the bottom of the keyboard. Green, you're going up one octave. Red, you're going up two octaves. And the same thing for down there. Let's check out some of the other sounds that are available. There are very many, as you will see. Many other sounds are available and you'll want to try those out. To do that, you're just going to use the dial here to step up through the many hundreds of sounds that we have on board, or the plus or minus buttons. So if we just step up through some of these, we've got things like piano pads. And this is just a single tone playing right now, a single program. I'll show you in a minute how to combine them. If you want to go up through the categories, you can just press these buttons down here, the category plus or minus. So now we're into the electric pianos. Perhaps not the most detailed Rhodes sounds that you're going to hear. There is some velocity switching and stuff going on, but they do sound fat. Yeah, very fat. I'm not sure what Korg has got going on here with their EQ and compression. But yeah, these are pleasing to play. Let's go on through the categories. Perhaps I can play you one sound from every category. Organs. One organ. Which 
sounds just as great as it did on the M1. Carry on through the categories, pipe organs. <laughs> Guitars. So these aren't the most hyper-realistic acoustic sounds, as I think you can hear yourselves. But they are quite serviceable and fine in the mix. Violins. Trumpets. Brass. Sax. Flutes. Pads. Leads. Bases. Ropey playing today, sorry about that. Too much reverb for a bass, but I'll show you later how we can adjust that. We have some drum kits. Now we're into the sound effects category, I think. And I think now we're into the special category with a lot of the contemporary sounds. More leads. EDM kits. And then we're back to the grand pianos. So that was a quick overview of some of the sounds and all of the categories. Sound sets combine up to four different sounds with splits and layers across the keyboard. You might know these as combi programs on other Korg synthesizers. You can create some interesting and epic sounds. I'll show you now how it's done. Now we can even combine different sounds together just by pressing shift and we can have up to four different parts playing at the same time. Let's enable a second part. So that gives us a pad together with our piano. Let's enable a third one. By pressing it, we can see what it is. So this is a string sound. We can even add a fourth, and this will be split down so we can play it with the left hand, and then the three other parts with the right hand. Now, thoughtfully, Korg have provided a whole lot of these combination sound set programs, and you can browse through and play those by pressing the sound set button. And now we can step up and down through them in the same way as we stepped up and down through the sounds. So we have things like an octave piano here. Sounds very Baywatch, doesn't it? Let's go up through some categories. I'm actually going to go up to the pads and see what kind of pad sounds we have programmed in. You've got quite useful uh, splits where you've got a pad in the left hand, a choir in this case, and some kind of flute in the right.
3 has a slightly peculiar array of real-time controls. Allow me to explain. So it's not in the shot right now, but down on the left we have a joystick control, which hopefully you saw my son playing on during the intro. It's quite nice. It's a little bit more advanced than a pitch bend and mod wheel because we have an extra dimension of control here. We can go up, put some vibrato, or pull it back, downwards for a filter sweep, and then left and right for your conventional pitch bend. And then in the middle here, we only have two performance controls other than the volume, and I won't count that. And uh, strangely, Korg have chosen to assign these only two knobs to EQ, which is a setting I don't find myself manipulating very much during a performance. But anyway, you can if you want to. It sounds like this. Maybe we should take a listen with the piano sound. So you can make it muffled or unpleasantly bright. Take out the bass or put in a lot of bass. So that's there if you want it, but I would have preferred to have this EQ in the menus and have this assigned to something a bit more musical, perhaps a filter and resonance control, or some way to manipulate the complexity of the styles, which I'm going to show you later. There really isn't much editing you can do on the sounds other than changing the effects. This is not a synthesizer, but if you like presets like I do, then this is the board for you. Anyway, here's a few things that you can do to tweak the sound to your taste. Whilst we can't edit the sounds themselves, as far as I can see, we can mess around with the effects, and that's quite a lot of fun, so we'll go into the effects here. There are two effects that are shared by all of the four parts here. You can adjust the send level, so let's do that now. We'll add a lot of send to these effects. There are two, effect one, we go to effect two, we'll add quite a lot of send there as well, so we can really hear what's going on. Now let's step up through some of these effects. Amp simulators, for example. Presses. Let's dial down the send. And a phaser on the FX1. Now perhaps that wasn't a very musical example, but I hope I demonstrated that there's quite a lot of possibility here to uh, add some nice effects to the sounds. The party piece and killer feature of this keyboard is the remarkable wide variety of accompaniment styles. You control and play along with a virtual backing band. It's great fun and many of the styles are quite inspiring, and some of them I will never use. Anyway, here's how you browse the styles. The i3 is a very friendly keyboard. When you start it up, it invites you to play it, so let's do just that. We have a piano sound. When I press sync start, it'll start playing along with me. I'm going to change to this variation. I'll tell you more about how these performance controls work in the next chapter. But for now, let's just have a go and see how well it recognizes the chords that I'm playing and accompanies me. Okay, it did a great job there, even it recognized some of my 
more advanced chords there. So that's pretty cool. Let's navigate through some of the styles. I'll show you how to do that. So if we just go down to there, this is a little bit tricky, uh, perhaps not so intuitive at first, but you just have to step down here, select where it says play the I3. Now we can go up and down through the styles. So let's play an F chord. And now I'll go up through some styles. Why don't I go down through every category so you can get a brief feeling, a little overview for the wide variety of styles and categories that we have on board here. So let's do that. There you go, you get the idea. You can also tweak the styles to create almost infinite number of variations. It's what I like to do when I find the styles to be a bit too busy and complex. I like to dial them back a bit, which gives me more room and space to play. Here's a demo. I actually missed a few categories, so here we go. This is style 001, pop beat. We can use this now to demonstrate how you can tweak this a little bit more to your liking, perhaps. So one thing that I quite like to do is to dial it back a little bit. There are eight different parts playing right now. We have drums, uh, we have bass, drums, percussion, and then five different instrument parts. I can switch those off if I want, so let's do that. And now we have something that is slightly less complex and perhaps gives me a little bit more space to improvise myself. Let's try something. You might want to remove the drums, so let's do that. We'll use this groove ballad as an example. Let's take a listen. Also swap out some of the sounds as well if you want to that are playing in the background let me show you that take a different bass sound a different kit style has four variations plus intros, endings, fills and breaks. Let me show you how to do it.
For each style, we have four variations, although unfortunately on just two buttons, which makes it a little bit more fiddly, I think. But we have the green and the red on the first button, and then the green on the red on the second variation button. This being the least complex or the least busy, and the red on that button being the most busy. Terrible explanation, but you'll see it in practice in just a second. We have fills. We have a break, which just interrupts the playback of the, of the style for one bar. And then we have two intros and two outros, again, using different color codes here. So let's go for the green intro leading into variation one. Sync start is on, so it'll start playing as soon as I play something on the keys. So let's go and we'll use this Love Disco to demonstrate how you control the styles. Okay, it does take a little bit of practice. You might have seen how I was struggling a little bit there to get the fill to lead into the next variation. That's something I like to do, have a fill to take you to the next variation to build up the track, build up the excitement of the track, but I was getting it wrong a little bit there. But anyway, that's how you do it. When performing along with the style, you'll probably want some appropriate sounds to play. Korg have very thoughtfully provided some suggestions in the form of performance sets. Let me show you how they work. These four buttons call up sound sets that are appropriate to the style you're playing. Let's try this out. We have Electro Dance. Sound set one. Wow, that's a pretty massive sound. Four. Yeah, liking that sound a lot, but that is how sound sets work, you can see. Uh, this is just using a single part, this one is a single part, this one is a single part, this one is using three layered together, which is why it was such a massive sound. Here's a nice thing I made by layering together four different sounds with a bass in the bottom and I've chosen a style but removed everything except for the drums so it sounds like this. that goes to demonstrate you're not stuck really with the styles as they come programmed by Korg. You can tweak them yourselves 
and make up your own sound combinations as well, which is really nice. There is an onboard MIDI sequencer, so you can record your own performances, speed them up, slow them down, remove and add the parts and play along with them. I haven't tried it and don't have a demo today, but I think it's quite a simple and straightforward process, as most things are on this keyboard. Again, without much possibility to do any deep editing. There's also an audio recorder and player that handles WAV files, MP3, and yes, even MIDI files. a settings mode where you can store your favorite styles and sounds. Like everything else here, it's pretty simple and very easy to use. You can quickly recall your favorite settings using this section over here. We have five different presets I can call up. And these contain the style information as well, tempo and all the settings really on the front panel. And you can step up and down through different banks, which is indicated here on the screen, bank C, D. So there are quite a lot of presets. And if you want to save one, you just simply hold down that button and then press, there you go. other key points that didn't come up in the demo. It doesn't have any speakers, which is a bit unusual for an Arranger keyboard, so you will need to connect it to external amplification. Fortunately, there are a pair of line outs that you can use to do this easily. Talking of inputs, outputs, it has MIDI out on the regular round DIN socket, which is really good. Also MIDI over USB. It has an audio in jack if you want to connect a phone or something and play along with backing tracks. It's got a foot pedal input for a sustain pedal. It runs on batteries, yes, up to eight hours as well, which is really good. It weighs just four kilograms, so this thing is ultra portable and you might have trouble holding it down to the stand if it's breezy. There is a special category with all the hip contemporary sounds and styles, like your trap, breakbeats, hip hop, EDM, yes, this is where all the good stuff is, and I'll have to do a demo of this for you sometime in the future. Thank you again to Korg for sending me some gear so that I could share it with you. Thank you for watching and subscribing, and a special thanks to my channel members and patrons. I'll see you all next time. Cheerio.